time of the day. It is Light on the Hill, CB Hangout Chat Night, and uh, we are coming uh, to you from Long Island, New York. I am Candle 1316, and my partner uh, and co-host is The Watchman. And um, I wasn't here last week, uh, a little bit under the uh, uh, emotional weather, so to speak. Uh, but uh, we're both here tonight, and uh, we hope that you will join us. And um, we have a topic. We're going to be talking about something interesting that people, you know, probably would like to talk about. Uh, how do you know that God is real? Okay, how do we know? How do we know we're not just following some made-up, fairy tale uh, and it's all wishful thinking and no one's listening and we're just here floating around in space and there's nothing else but us can we know a hundred percent and uh, I say we can even scientifically we can know a hundred percent so that's what we're going to toss around today uh, hopefully by the time you're t uh, we're done with this hour uh, it'll be crystal clear to you because uh, it, there is no stretch, there is no gray, it is crystal clear. And that's what we're going to talk about. So we welcome everyone uh, who's out there, agnostic, atheist, Satanist, Buddhist, Muslim, Jew, whatever you are, everyone's welcome. Uh, if you don't want to say anything, that's cool too. You want to lay low, you want to just give us a key, let us know you're there. Uh, but uh, everyone's welcome. Everyone opinions matters, uh, and uh, uh, so that's what we're going to do. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to the Watchman. He's going to tell you about our social media presence, how you can listen to us and contact us online, and our email, and all those other things that go on as we uh, uh, record this show live, and then we uh, rebroadcast it over the airways a second time. So, Watchman, over to you. Hello out there, this is uh, The Watchman, and uh, yep, every Monday night, 8 p.m., we do this, uh, and we also have a uh, Facebook page, which is called Light on a Hill, CB Ministries, uh, you could type that in on Facebook, or you could also type in at L-O-A-H-C-B, and it'll bring you right to the page, um, our email address is lightonahillcb at gmail.com and we also have a, uh, a YouTube channel um, which is Light on a Hill CB. if you type that in on uh, YouTube it'll bring you there and there also is a new thing YouTube is doing now with handles uh, so as soon as I get one it's funny they actually call it a handle and we're on the CB uh, but there is a thing handles. So as soon as I get one, I just did a uh, a custom one. So as soon as I get it, um, I'll give you that, and that'll be that'll be much easier. You just you know type in what I what I put on there, and uh, or what they give me, and uh, and it'll bring you right to uh, to to the page uh, to the channel. Um, and on that channel is some of the discussions that we have on here. Uh, I'm also going to be doing some other some some other things. Uh, uh, you know, walks and things that I do and some prayers and scriptures on there and uh, on the Facebook page also that's um, some of what we talk about on, on here is on there also throughout the week I post, you know, scriptures, prayers a lot of conversations with a lot of people there's uh, just about, I think 2200 followers or something like that now or close to it and uh yeah, so there's a lot of conversations going back and forth between people, between myself and people. Um, and you could post, you know, prayer requests and uh, questions and anything uh, anything that you want on there uh, also. And I'm pretty attentive to it. I get back to everybody who sends messages and things. Uh, so, yeah, so we look forward to, uh, obviously, it'd be awesome to talk to you on here. Uh, but we'll talk uh, in, in any means that we have at our disposal. Uh, so, yeah, look forward to it. Between the two of us, there's a uh, a pause 
uh, I actually count uh, one one thousand for six seconds each time. And uh, the reason why we do that because we don't want to hog up the radio. It's it's not proper radio etiquette to just talk all night long. It's a citizen band, so it's for everyone. So if anyone wants to chime in or use this channel, we don't want to hog it or. Uh, go against any of the uh, CB rules, and, and it gives you a chance to, you know, chime in and uh, say something, or key your mic or whatever. So that's why you're going to hear that uh, five to six second break or pause between our discussions. So uh, anyway, we're going to open up uh, with a word of prayer, uh, so you understand, uh, you know, this is not us, this is something bigger than us. So Father God, Creator, uh, the maker of the universe, the galaxies beyond the galaxies, the God of quantum physics, the God of the atom, the God of the molecule, the God of the space-time continuum, the God of mass, uh, the God of momentum and physics and all the sciences out there, the God, the creator of the galaxies beyond the galaxies beyond the galaxies, the maker of the very air we breathe, uh, the blood that flows through our veins. We pray to you today that you would give the winds a mighty voice and take the signal from our antennas and just shoot them into wherever that person is who needs to hear this, whether they're listening in, in their basement, in their car, driving, uh, maybe just going through the channels, wondering what these kooky guys do on Monday nights on Channel 3 at 8 o'clock. Uh, or maybe you're listening online on YouTube, maybe on Facebook, or wherever this goes. Uh, we pray for you, and we pray to our God for you, to our Creator for you. Uh, bless this show tonight, in Jesus' name, amen. And 10 4, yes. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this night. Thank you for. For any ears out there that are going to hear, and and who knows where they could be, they could be a block away, or as we've experienced, they could be a thousand miles away, and maybe they could reach us, and maybe they can't, maybe they can only hear us, but we thank you, Lord, we thank you that, that behind everything, behind the mechanics of these radios, there is you, that behind the power of the antenna is you. That the way our words go up this little stick on my roof and they just go into the atmosphere and it goes that I could speak into this microphone and 30 seconds later someone from a thousand miles away respond it is unbelievable to me is mind-blowing I thank you Lord that that I can serve you I thank you Lord that we could do this every Monday night and I thank you for for having your word to share with people, Lord, that, that what I'm saying is not just empty nonsense, because your word, words written in this Bible, are life, are truth, are power. And I thank you, Lord, that I could use them to put out into the world. And again, Father, anyone who hears, let your work be done in them, as we know it will. In Jesus' name we pray. Okay, so we're talking about tonight. How do we know God is real? Uh, and the reason why that's important is before we can get to, uh, you know, which way to get to God? Who is this God? How do we know Jesus is God? How do we know Buddha isn't God? Before we get to any of that stuff, we first have to come to the place of, is there a creator? So you, have, you can't put the cart before the horse. We first have to decide, and you have to decide, is there an intelligent designer? Is there a creator? Is there a... a a instigator, a beginner, uh, something that's always been there. And then, you know, once we come to that conclusion and we are in agreement with that, then we move on to the next part, which is, okay, well, who would that 
creator be? Who would that being be? And would that being, uh, based upon the creation that he's made, would he be organized? Would he be structured? Would he leave a blueprint? Uh, would he have a set of rules? Uh, would there be certain protocols that we need to follow? Uh, and the other question is, if there is this creator, why did he create us? What's the purpose? Why? I mean, it's the, it's the question of the ages. Why are we here? Is it just to have a good time on the weekends and hang out with your buddies at the bar and go bowling or go to a good concert? Is that the meaning of life? Or is there something bigger? So before we go to those things, we need to ask the question. Well, I don't, because I believe with all my heart, uh, being a science guy, and I've shared before, uh, that uh, I went from being a, you know, from a nominal religion that I grew up with here on Long Island, Catholic, Italian, you know, that's what I was, and then I, I left all that, and I became an atheist, and uh, uh, I love science, and uh, got into UFOs, and then I dabbled in the occult, uh, but was an atheist for quite a while, and uh, but my love of science and knowledge and intellect and wisdom and cause and effect led me uh, to the fact that there is a creator. Uh, there is no doubt. So that put me in a place where I had to decide, well, what am I going to do about that? Uh, where do I go from there? Who is this creator and what might he want from me? And does he have a plan for my life? So that's what we're going to be bouncing around uh, tonight on this discussion. Uh, Watchmen, what say you? Hey, everybody. Uh, this is the Watchman, and uh, I have a scripture I'd like to share. Uh, Romans 1, 19 through 20. Uh, and it's New Living Translation. They know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power, and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. And, you know, we have witnessed... God all our lives in, in all things, you know, whether we knew it or not at the time. You know, we see him in, in the sunrises and sunsets. We see him in, in all the, all the intricate details of the sciences that keep, you know, the, the planet spinning and the tides and currents flowing. We see God from, you know, the ozone layer which shields us from, you know, certain death from radiation from space to photosynthesis, which, uh, you know, as a byproduct provides, you know, oxygen to sustain all life on Earth. We see God in the miraculous forming of new life in a mother's womb. We see God everywhere all the time in all things. And what we are missing is belief. And, you know, as people, I mean, we're so wi so willingly, you know, we believe some, a lot of things. Some, some of them are, you know, silly things. But most of the things that we believe require a willingness to remain blind, a a willingness to believe lies. We, and, you know, we would rather a lot of times believe the lie rather than the truth. So in our quest tonight uh, to determine is there a God, a creator, 
an intelligent designer well you have to ask yourself first scientifically well what's the option because there's you know there's only two options the option that probably you have been taught as I have been taught from a little kid is evolution okay evolution the Big Bang that you know billions of years ago there was nothing just nothing blackness not even blackness just nothing no mass no matter no nothing no not even time and for some reason unknowns to anyone that there was this grand explosion and nothing exploded and formed everything we see and from the primordial soup uh, wherever that came from crawled out some enzymes that mixed together with some electricity and uh, a single cell was formed and then that cell morphed into uh, a more complex cell and on its own and of its own intelligence uh, it developed uh, uh, to be more sophisticated and then it you know it left the water and crawled up on the ocean you know on the land and then you know the frog and then the monkey and uh, then here we are today uh, so that's your first choice, okay? And they say that that's science, uh, but it is clear to me that that takes faith. That's a faith-based system because no one was there to see it. Uh, no one was there to see what happened. Uh, you're just uh, going that way because you've been taught there is nothing else. There is just that, and you better accept it. Well. That seems pretty odd to me because everything I know uh, that I see is based on what created it. If I walk down the streets of Manhattan, I, I live in New York here, and I see buildings, I don't say, wow, these buildings must have you know, evolved over millions of years. No, I see a building, I know there's a builder. Uh, I see a car, I know there's a car maker. Uh, everything I see, uh, as I look around, I'm looking at my CB. I have a CB, uh, I know it didn't evolve and just come into being because the right parts were thrown together. Uh, someone designed it with knobs on it and with a purpose and a plan. So that's obvious to me. Uh, that's logical. Uh, evolution is completely unscientific. It is unprovable. Uh, it is illogical. Uh, it is impossible because nothing comes from nothing. Uh, yet people will bet their whole lives that there is nothing but everything that we are today. And uh, that's a pretty big meatball hanging out there, people. And you have to decide everything that you are and will ever be. Uh, it has no purpose then. Uh, you're just a random act. Uh, you had no beginning, no end. When you die, you rot in the ground, and that's just it. And uh, this planet floating through space just came out of nowhere. And that's it. There's nothing more. So you have to make that decision. Or the other side of the coin is there is a designer. Now, if, if you, you don't see design and complexity in, in an atom, uh, look at your hand and the muscles and the tendons just to make you know in a split second my mind sends a signal I don't have to wait for it to go through my arms to get to my fingers you watch somebody play guitar uh, how does that happen uh, it's pretty obvious there's some com there's some complex uh, electricity going through there is design uh, there is intelligence uh, there is form there is function so those are the two sides of the coin. Which one will you choose? Yeah. 10-4. And, you know, even before, even, you know, prior to coming into a, to a real uh, relationship, you know, I grew up, uh, you know, uh, as my, my partner here said, you know, a, a nominal, uh, you know, kind of a Catholic like everybody else was and, you know, not, not really in relationship, just kind of following along like I was supposed to. Uh, so I didn't consider that I had a relationship with God, but I, 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 
I believed in God, you know, I, I believed that there was a God, that he did exist. And even, even prior to being into, in a real relationship, uh, with God, you could, you could see everywhere that God, it, it seems just, just undeniable to me, especially now, undeniable that any of this could take place without a designer. Everything being what it is that if, you know, I forget what the actual number is, but if, if the sun was any closer or any further away, you know, if the, if the tides didn't function exact, exactly as they do, there's two, there is so many things that had to be perfect for life to be able to exist. Too many. It's not just one thing, oh, you you got to put the battery in and, you know, that's all that was required. You look around at the, at, at the intricacies of everything, how it had to be perfect. Without photosynthesis, there'd be no oxygen. Without the tides, the, you know, things would heat up or cool down too much and it would, you know, ice age. I mean, just all sorts of things that had to be absolutely perfect. And, and I'm certain that there's things that I don't know. But there's things that people, as, as our entire uh, species don't know about the things that have to be perfect. Who knows if that planet, you know, out there, you know, a million light years away, if that was taken out of the equation would throw off. Who knows? Everything had to be perfect for life to exist. And if anything was different, it wouldn't have. If that doesn't scream a creator, a designer, an a unbelievable intelligence, I don't know what does. Amen. And, uh, you know, when we look around, now my background is, uh, I started out as a blue collar worker, uh, I uh, was an electrician. I went to school to be an electrician, uh, got involved in electronics, and then I became a mechanic, from an auto mechanic to a diesel mechanic to an instructor. And I'm a tangible person. Uh, I see things. Now, uh, I've rebuilt engines. And I know just by looking at an engine, uh, I can't just take all the parts, crankshaft, camshaft, connecting rods, even if I had those parts, if I just threw them against the wall, what are the odds that they would all fall together and be perfectly timed and begin to even work? Uh, take your watch. If you have, I'm, a, I'm an old school guy. I have a, a watch with, you know, a minute hand and gears and a timer and everything. Now, first of all, we have to step out on a limb and say that all those parts existed on their own first. But let's say we took that watch, we took it apart, all the little parts, put it in a cup, uh, shook it up, and then threw it out into space. What would be the chances, number one, that they would all fall together exactly where they need to be? And number two, that it would begin to work? And number three, that it would tell time? See, that's what evolution is asking you to do. But even more, it's telling you that there was no parts. The parts were the result of an explosion. So the, an explosion made intricate parts that assembled themselves and began to tell time perfectly. Uh, that's just a lot to, uh, to uh, digest. Uh, as a, a young boy, young man, I used to play with fireworks and stuff and blow things up, and I blew up a lot of stuff with M80s and firecrackers. I've never seen anything turn out better uh, after I blew it up, after an explosion. Matter of fact, my mother got pretty mad when I took one of her little vases and blew it up. Uh, it didn't turn into a uh, Mercedes Benz. No, it, it turned into a bunch of rubble. So explosions don't, you know, disorder doesn't create order. It creates disorder. Uh, so to have everything so orderly working Boy, there has to be a plan behind it. There really does. Uh 
Yeah, ten four. You know, and I've had this this conversation before. Not, you know, not not even in a in a, a biblical or a scriptural discussion, but you know, water. The fact that the earth is covered with the thing that all life needs. I mean, there's nothing on earth that doesn't need water to live. And and it, it covers the face of the earth. You know, it's everywhere. I know a lot of it's not drinkable because it's salt. But, um, you know, that's that's the thing too, that everything that life needs is here. It's supplied. You know, the, the fact that, that, you know, the the vegetables, the seeds they grow, the the animals they reproduce, everything that we need to survive is here, is provided. And it's on a basis that it continues. It doesn't, you know, maybe, you know, certain things will run out eventually, resources, things like that, but there, it's on a basis that it continues to reproduce itself. You know, the the vegetables, the food, the meats, it's its all here, the air that we breathe. And then, you know, what we breathe out, the, the, the trees then, you know, do their thing and turn it back into oxygen. And I mean, unbelievable. It would take so much faith to believe in anything else but a designer. You You want to talk about faith believe that there's not a god that in my mind would require far more faith than uh than believing in god amen a double amen to that watchman uh because i've i've often said the same thing uh Believing that there's a, a designer is very logical, and it is scientific. Uh, believing in evolution is faith-based. You have to believe in something that is completely impossible to happen. Um, take, for example, okay, we look at the human body, the circulatory system. Uh, what do we have? And let's just take the basic components. We have the heart, we have the veins or arteries, and we have the blood. The heart is designed to pump blood. The veins and the arteries carry the blood. Uh, each one of them are integral to the other. But we have to ask the question, if things evolved, then what evolved first? If the heart evolved first, well, why would it evolve? Why would a pump evolve if there wasn't blood? Um, if the blood evolved first, well, where would it sit? Just lay on on the ground uh, if it had no vein to, to travel through. And if the veins and arteries evolve first, why would they evolve with nothing to go through them and nothing to pump that which went through them? You see, everything would have to be designed exactly at the same time, interconnected with the other. There is no time, the heart would never, you know, evolve on its own and always remember everything that you see is based in intelligence uh evolution says there is no intelligence it's just random acts well how can random acts uh create design how can they have wisdom to know how a functioning organism is going to work you look at a flagellum uh, the flagellum uh, you see on a cell, like especially like on a sperm, on a male sperm, it's like this little propeller. It's a little motorboat, and if you break that down to its uh, intricate parts, it has a stator, it has a crankshaft, it has a rotor, it has a propeller. Uh, those things uh, didn't evolve separately. They evolved simultaneously, and they self-assembled themselves automatically functioning and working working and where do they get the energy from we know of proteins and things but uh, where is this energy come uh, coming from where is this propulsion system why was it even to come 
So you really have to ask these things, and I have no fear standing next to the greatest scientist in the world, because the greatest scientist in the world still has to answer why, why, where, and how. Yeah, ten four. Copy that. And uh, you know, another thing that that just occurred to me, I you know, while you were speaking, was you know, and and you can correct me or somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there is this. You know, is there a machine out there now? If you look at our bodies as a machine, if you look at the the world and the processes of the world as a machine, is there any machine out there that that you can start and it'll just continue forever it'll just keep going it'll just go until you know until and you look at like the the processes of the earth you know it's a, it's like a constant system that's always going on and you know there's there's nothing else i could think of that that is a mechanism or a process or a mechanical thing anything that I could think of that that you just start and you could walk away from and it just continues and you know earth being that process and earth being that process how could God not play a role in that how could there not be a designer I mean there's there's things at play every day all around us that unbelievable our minds could never think of this our our greatest and wisest and smartest people can't figure these things out how could we how could we think that something smarter than us greater than us wiser than us had no part in in doing any of it that it could be just a fluke
satellites and our GPS systems, they are so complex, yet no one ever questions who is spinning the earth. Why does it stay spinning? Why doesn't it get slower? Why doesn't it spin faster? There is a force behind it. And with that force, there is intelligence. And with that intelligence, there is purpose. Those three are integral to the answer. Yeah, 10 4. And you know, you think, you know, all that, absolutely. And, you know, the moon, you know, that it, it keeps, you know, the tides and, you know, the, the water flowing. I mean, there's just, it, there's, there's too many things for my, my very, very finite brain to even, to even be able to, to think about all the things. I mean, the things that, that you've touched on and the things that I've touched on, there, there is probably so much more that that point to the existence of God to the creator that that we're not we're not even going to be able to touch on but there are so many things going on you know all the time and you know I remember uh, you know I'm a father I have two kids and that always seemed uh, you know, miraculous to me, as it does, you know, to to a lot of people who experience it. You know, when you, you, you know, get together with your partner and then out of that relationship comes this brand new life. You know, it's hard, it's hard to deny God's, God's existence when you think about just that process, the process of creation, uh, process of birth that you know that two people come together and create a new life you know and it's it's that process is crazy complex like right from conception the fact that there's I don't know the exact was it 8 billion people on earth I think uh, and no Two people have the same fingerprint. That, you know, there's identical twins, you know, share the the same genetic components that on the, you know, if you were to break them apart, it's it's identical. But they grow up and they become two different people. You know, unique individuals. There's so much in the design that it's, you know, like I said before, it would be unbelievable, unfathomable to think anything else other than intelligent design. There's, there's just too much. It's overwhelming amount of evidence. And even... You know, there's even scientists, there's even people who have been talking about the Big Bang, and they're like, well, you know, starting to pull back a little bit. That kind of creates, actually, maybe more questions than... But, you know, that's the way things, you know, even more obvious now is, you know, it, they don't necessarily have to have all the answers to to be able to believe what they want. You know, if it's something that you want to believe, if if your goal is to discount God, then you you believe whatever you want. You know, you'll you'll find a way to believe. If that's the goal, then then you'll believe. And it doesn't have to be true. We see that all over the place all the time now in our society, in all different realms of society. We see that we don't need all the information to say, oh yeah, I believe that, or you know. Whatever it is, if it's something that I want to believe, then it's fine. I don't need all the information. It doesn't have to be true. I'll just choose to believe it. And, you know, the, the problem is we're, we're choosing to believe in the wrong thing. Amen, Watchman. And getting back on that point that you started with, 
you know, we were taught in school evolution, and it's still taught uh, to every single kid out there. Uh, and it's taught, they say it's the theory of evolution, but they don't teach it as a theory, they teach it as a fact, because there is no other alternative to them. Why? Because they don't want there to be a creator and a designer, because then we are subservient to that which is above us. So that is why there must be evolution. But we have to we have to ask this question logically, okay? So they tell us that from a single cell everything evolved and the thing behind it died out. Well, if that's the case, then there should only be one species left. Everything before that should have died out, and there should just be one thing. Yet we have diversity. Uh, we have fish, we have birds, we have horses, we have cats, we have humans, we have elephants, we have giraffes. Why such diversity if everything came from one single cell? And here is the other thing that the watchman was talking about, and they never discussed this. When these things so-called, this thing, you know, leaped up on the first beach, it would have to have happened in two separate ways, a male and a female. Because where did that come from? See, there has to be, if, if a fish evolved to a frog that evolved to a, a land-based animal, it would have happened, it would have had to have happened twice, yet one being male and one being female with the ability to reproduce. You see, without that, the species could not continue. So where does male and female come into the picture? Uh, and like the watchman said, that is something, sometimes things that happen so commonplace, we take them for granted, but we can get a little explicit, uh, explicit here, we're all adults. It's pretty incredible that uh, a man's genitalia is designed, it can transform, it can be used for urination, it can be used for penetration, it is designed to keep sperm that the woman has eggs in her body, which is designed to receive the man at, at the perfect angle. These things were designed to be working together. How did that happen? How does evolution explain that? It doesn't, because these things were intelligently designed, okay? And that's where we're going tonight. We're going with this intelligent design. And once you come to the place where there is no design, uh, there is no denying there is an intelligent designer, then, and maybe this is what we'll do, Watchmen, maybe each week we're going to build this case and we're going to work right up to Jesus Christ, right at Christmas time. God coming to Earth uh, as a human, okay, the extraterrestrial coming to Earth, uh, because we have to do the process, okay? If there is an intelligent designer, it is obvious that there is, well then, who is he? What did he, what does he want? Why did he make us? Why did he come to earth? Who is he? How do we know it's the God of the Bible? How do we know it's, it's, it's not Muhammad or it's not Buddha or it's not Tom Cruise? How do we know? Well, maybe in the next couple of weeks we will work on this case scientifically. We'll talk about Israel and what does it mean about God's chosen people? How do they come into play? See? And you're going to see that it's all organized and it's all structured and it's all planned and it's all designed. Yeah, 10-4, that's, that's a good idea. And, you know, the, the amount of of contradictions that uh, that there are to to not believe in a designer I mean we look you know all around us everything right like you said I mean the TV if I told you it came from nowhere would would you believe that would you buy it that it just you know it just fell out of the sky or or the bed or the CB radio or the, the, the cars that we're sitting in driving around you know, would you believe anything that you see around you? Would you, would you ever even be tempted to believe for a second 
that oh oh all these houses on the block yeah they just they just appeared out of nowhere or or anything that you see you know when it comes to physical things that 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 men built that men made you know and you accept these were made by something these were made why would it be any different when it came to an entire planet when it came to water when it came to air, when it came to animals, when it came to everything that we need to live, why why all of a sudden would the would the thought process change from oh yeah, all the houses on the block must have been built by somebody, all the cars must have been built by somebody, but then when it comes to the issue of God and it comes to the issue of all that we have that sustains us and sustains our life does the thought process change and say, oh no, yep, that, that just came from nowhere. I'll accept that. You know, why can't we believe? Why, you know, why can't we believe the truth? to that and you know another uh you know one way that that i you know had an experience you know before uh coming into relationship with uh with jesus christ uh i was always i was always a seeker you know i i you know probably partially because of uh you know a little roughness in my upbringing it kind of uh 
you know, was always coming from a place of trying to find something, trying to find some kind of purpose or trying to find some kind of meaning or some kind of help or, you know, some way out of my, my madness. And, you know, as a result of that, uh, you know, which is, I, I thank God now for everything that ever happened in my life because it led me to where I am now. But, um, you know, I tried, uh, you know, was into plants, uh, you know, was into uh, even like Buddhism. I went to, uh, we have a, a, a Buddhist temple, you know, not far from, from where I'm speaking to you from. Uh, you know, I went there for a time. I did meditation. There was, you know, these different books on, uh, you know, Qi Kung, which was like a martial art type deal with cultivating the body's energy and uh, uh, what else? It did uh, these, I remember there was these series of books, the Celestine Prophecy, it was called, and it was about, you know, similar to Qi Kung, but it was no no coincidences and no synchronicities and you know, all this, this kind of stuff, all, you know, spiritually based kind of stuff. And, and I got, you know, seriously, uh, into a lot of different things. And the one thing that, that I found, uh, that was true of all of them, um, uh, is that there could be some little temporary, uh, you know, excitements or temporary, you know, positive feelings, but nothing ever changed me. Nothing in those other things that I experienced ever told me that, uh, you know, that, that there was a change that needed to take place. Nothing ever healed me or, for lack of a better word, fixed me. Nothing ever changed the things about me that really what I was doing, seeking all these things, was 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 trying to fix those things in me that were broken. And and nothing ever worked. No matter what I tried, no matter what I did, uh, nothing worked. Nothing had that effect. Uh, and coming into relationship with Jesus Christ was the only thing that ever uh, took those things that I didn't want. And, you know, some of them... There was there was some things when I came into relationship with Jesus was just gone. And then there's, you know, other things that I'm working on and can, will continue to work on. Maybe I'll work on them for the rest of my life. Who knows? But the only impact, the only real changing, lasting impact has been in relationship with Jesus Christ. Nothing else has had that impact. Not having kids, not getting married, not a desire to want to do better, to want to be better. No meditation, no nothing I ever did was enough. And then there was the relationship with Jesus Christ, which was an extraordinary impact. Every single one. 
because religion is not the answer, how can there be a million ways to build a CB radio? There's only one way to build a CB radio, not one way, uh, I'm, I'm not a million ways. So there's, there can't be a million stories. There needs to be one way that has the science that explains mass and matter and time. Uh, there has to be some book, some intelligence that explains everything about the creation, and that's only found one place, because no religion has an answer. Uh, and we're going to tell you where that answer is found and who this creator is. Isn't that cool? People, we can, this creator has revealed himself in great detail, and we can know his, his mind and uh, his ability and his power and his purpose and what the essence of, of who he is, is, uh, and what, you know, we can even learn a little bit about what, what he has been doing for the last million years and what he's going to be doing for the next million years, and we're going to be discussing that, and we hope you'll join us on this journey as we come to the conclusion and then and then what do we do when we get there then there's the choice deny it or throw it away and realize that that decision you will have to live with for all eternity because in finding out who this designer is also explains what the design is if there's a creator there's a creation and that's us and if we are a offshoot of the Creator, then what about us? What does that mean uh, to you and I? Where do we go? Where do we fit in? Uh, are we missing a download that we need, uh, that we must have? Uh, are we missing, you know, that uh, tag? You know, if you, you know, a lot of times with the cars today, you know, you have to go to the dealer and they have to do an upgrade of your of your computer because you're missing a, a protocol or a program. Well, what if we are missing a protocol, a program that only the creator has and he's been trying to download it to us and we're saying we don't want it, we don't need it. Uh, so these are the things we're going to be discussing. Uh, Watchmen, as we uh, uh, get to that hour, do uh, you have any closing thoughts? I do, actually. It's not uh, not uh, directly on the topic, but, uh, you know, earlier today I, I came ac across this, and, uh, uh, you know, like I always say, it was, there's so many things in the Bible that I describe as beautiful, and this is this is definitely one of them too. I I read it earlier, and I've I've been reading it, you know, over and over today. And it's uh, I just wanted to share this too. Is uh, the prayer of Jesus? After saying all these things, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, "Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so He can give glory back to you. For you have given Him authority over everyone." He gives eternal life to each one you have given him. And this is the way to have eternal life, to know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, bring me into the glory we shared before the world began. I have revealed you to the ones you gave me from this world. They were always yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything I have is a gift from you, for I have passed on to them the message you gave me. They accepted it, and now that I and know that I came from you, and they believe you sent me. And that decision is ours. We need to choose. Choose to believe that what we've seen what we have heard is the truth. Choose to believe that Jesus Christ was sent by God the Father to be sacrificed on the cross and pay the penalty for our sin, sin that he never committed. 
there has never been a truer love than that. Watchmen, that was a beautiful, beautiful scripture to close with. Absolutely perfect, timely, uh, the smoking gun for the night. And that is the essence of all that we have spoken about tonight. So we close out tonight, and uh, we ask you to join us next week as we continue. This is going to be a multi-part discussion. Uh, as uh, And if it's okay with the watchman, uh, 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 if, if you think this is a good idea, and uh, I, uh, I think it will lead us perfectly up to the Christmas season, up to Christmas Day. So join us next week as we continue this discussion and we go from point A to point B to point C to point D. And then point E is what will you do about it? And what will I or what have I done about it? What has the watchman done about it? And is it not important or is it very important? You have to decide. Uh, so we, we thank you uh, tonight for sticking with us, uh, putting up with our discussion. Uh, we pray wherever you are out there, wherever you are listening, uh, I know maybe you have thoughts going through your head and going, who do these guys think they are? Or, or maybe you're thinking, wow, I never looked at it that way before. I never thought of these things. And maybe the Creator is tugging on your heart and he's saying, look at me, I've been right in front of you, you didn't even see me, and I'm crying out to you, I'm crying out to this world today, this world who has kicked their creator out, and because of that, the creation is imploding. The creation cannot sustain itself. It's unsustainable without the creator, and we are kicking the creator out, and the creator says, you do not want me, I will move on, and the creation will have to live on its own, and we see that's not working too well. So join us in this journey, and um, Watchman, why don't you close us out in prayer? 10-4, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for this night. We thank you, Lord, that, that ever words can leave our mouths that make any sense that have any goodness to them. We thank you, Lord, that, that the words that we can speak now bring life to people, that they are your words, Heavenly Father, that we can speak into the world, words that have the power to change, words that have the power to save, words that come from the Creator of all things, of our hearts, of our minds, of our souls. We thank you, Lord, for the relationship that we have with you. We thank you that we can live a life of service to you, no longer living just for ourselves, selfish and self-centered, Lord, but we can live for you and do the work that you would have us do. We thank you, Heavenly Father, and we thank you for anyone who heard tonight, and we know, as we always say, Isaiah 55, 11, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Thank you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Men, watchmen, I'll catch you on the other side. Ten four.